Yay! Lulu's back. Just Yay. like, what made you decide to pick this recipe? Um, it's delicious. <laughs> it actually yeah. has quite a few ingredients in it, but it's yeah. mostly ingredients that any regular, well, I don't know, regular chef has around. I mean, soy sauce and vinegars and spices and, um, I would say the only thing I usually make my own uh, broth, but yeah. I've been using that so much that I'm going to have to make some broth. So we'll cover that. So. And the only other thing that I don't always have fresh, it always goes bad on me is my ginger. I mean, I always have garlic, but ginger is something for me that I got to check it out, make sure it's, you know, up cilantro to and fresh herbs always go bad for me. And I actually, the stores I went to yesterday, I realized usually I'm prepared ahead of time. It was like 9 p.m. last night and I was like, oh, I didn't go shopping. And then like, what stores are open? And I had to get cilantro in a tube. Oh, that's because, interesting. And so, yeah, I mean, this, once it's open, you just leave it in the fridge and it stays good. Oh. Otherwise, um, I did grab some parsley. Have you just, it was really cheap. <laughs> before do you know how it tastes you can um good. this is i mean this tastes like well if you've ever blended parse um cilantro it tastes the same you know when you have a spring it it when you bite into it it tastes different than when it's blended it's yeah. slightly different but and you have your nuts because that's an important ingredient yeah that was the primary thing was it actually took me probably an extra 10 minutes to find just plain peanuts. Nowadays, yeah. they're all like honey mustard and honey this and flavor that. And just like it was on the very bottom shelf. That's what I can say. And for this recipe, I personally like the dry roasted. Yeah. It's a, but I, you know, um, me and so, um, let me just tell everybody real quick the uh, first off, how many people are cooking with us? It would be good to know. Just like, um, so far, I think. Well, or Suzanne, I I kind of am. Well, well you know, Suzanne, Suzanne always just like makes whatever she has there and makes something awesome. But well, I caught I caught a cold, so I didn't go shopping okay. or anything. So I'm using what I have, but I'm really interested in and excited about the dressing. Yeah, that this is all that, about the dressing. Exactly. So, and I have all so the you ingredients. You have to have peanut butter. Yep, I've got peanut butter. Okay, and we're good. Then. Just yeah, so, so I'm I'm set for the peanut for the dressing. All right. And I say about this recipe because the ratios of all the different ingredients for the peanut dressing is kind of uh, not complicated, but there's like eleven ingredients, and it's, I do very precise measuring because I like the taste of it. If I were to get a tattoo, I do believe it is this recipe. Really? I would tattoo <laughs> right here. You know, it's um, eleven ingredients. You couldn't tattoo it right there. You'd have to tattoo it all the way around, or all the way. It would be the whole arm. It would be real tiny. It'd be like a quarterback wearing the plays on their arm. <laughs> on both arms, you know. But this, I love this recipe, and I always have to go back. Now, now, have you ever done it with any other nut butter? Because some people are allergic to peanuts. No, and I would be interested in trying substitutions. I love this so much exactly the way it is. I'm a hard pressed, but I'm sure you could trade out some vinegars or. Yeah, because what are the two go to almonds and cashews? Because technically those aren't nuts. So yep. those people yep. who are allergic to nuts can eat those. So. That would be interesting. It would be an entire. It would taste different. But yeah. it might, I can't imagine. You put enough garlic and ginger in anything and it's heavenly. So um, the supplies that you will need, um, you're going to learn how to blanch uh, vegetables. If you've never done that, it's kind of a nice tool because a lot of times salads you make will have blanched vegetables. But so, you, But you said it, the pasta and the vegetables aren't extremely important. No, but in order to show you the whole process for right. me, I, I got to have the, the pasta and the vegetables. So right. I have a big old pot right here. Okay. And I'm going to fill that with water and get that started. 
Um, I am cooking my protein fresh. So there is uh, chicken in there that I'll turn on and I'll take about five minutes to cook. Um, so I went shopping at 9 p.m. last night. I grabbed a rotisserie chicken, but I oh, also grabbed, oh. um, originally I was gonna buy chicken breasts, but they're like twice as much without the bones. And then if you if you include the, the little bone, you can cut that bone off yeah. and it will then be good for making the broth. Yeah, and, when, and if you cook it with the oh. bone off, you'll just pull off the chicken and leave well, the bone the broth, so yeah. I you'll could change cameras so it's easier to see everything. You'll need a food processor or a, a blender. I've always made it with a blender, but today I'm trying my food processor. I have a big, huge bowl that'll end up getting um, ice cubes in it with water because as soon as the vegetables are, are blanched, I plunge them into the um, ice water. It keeps them real colorful as well as it uh, stops the cooking process. I'm going to save my water after I cook all my vegetables that need to be blanched. I'm going to end up cooking my linguine in it. And then I'm going to save that water and make vegetable broth when we're done with this show. Oh, you, you are my <laughs> depression hero. This is like I grew up. We don't waste any of the heat or the right. vitamins of anything we do. And then, you know, I mean... In Italian cooking, you save the broth of the pasta to put back in because you want that starch. Yeah, I've so. never made my uh, vegetable broth with the starch, but it's going to have to do. And my pasta is going to be, and I have not ever used this before, but it's going to be my rice noodles. It's linguine rice noodles. So uh, they should. I looked for them, you know, because I'm I'm uh, um, sensitive to gluten, so I looked and they were out. They only had the thin, thin rice noodles. So I got these linguinis and it's from, um, I'm sensitive to gluten, but I found that gluten from Italy, I'm less sensitive. Like, and so this one is uh, pasta made in Italy. So Italian wheat, I don't know, it's non-GMO and it tends to be a different kind of wheat than the U.S. and I, hmm. I do better. I don't know. And how long does it say to cook that? Does it say on the box? Um, somewhere. Probably seven to nine minutes. That's the there standard for pasta. Um, for authentic boil for 13. But okay. This is so you may, yeah, yours is probably thicker. You may want to do separate pots only because oh, yeah. um, if you're doing, well, actually, you could do the vegetables and then we'll, you could throw the pasta in and then we'd make the peanut sauce together. And I, I did buy... Because it's so little broth, the can of broth is only like a dollar fifty. But normally those containers of broth are like four to six dollars. So yeah. I don't buy broth anymore. I just so I like, don't. I get all the bones out of the rotisserie chicken, separate it, toss it in. Now, if you want bone broth, I crack the bones to get oh. that marrow out. But if you want the light broth, so usually I actually do two broths from the same one. I'll do the light broth. And mm -hmm. then when the bones are softer, it's easier to crack the bones and then I'll recook them for a bone broth. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so I do it twice. And you can keep saying, you know, if you want to make the light broth and then throw them in the freezer and when you get a lot, you can make bone broth. Um, so my pasta says it's going to take just four to six minutes. So I'll just okay. do it. Yeah, that's, that, then, that's the advantage of rice noodles. And I will plunge it into the ice water the same stuff that I'm doing with the with the vegetables. So um, let me run through the, well, let me first get my water going because it's a big pot. Oh, good idea, because it takes a while. Yeah. Yep. That's one of the things about our show is we show all the mistakes and how it really takes, it's not this instant, hey, the water's boiling. So you're putting your water on and I have, this strainer, which is really neat. It's from a double boiler or a steamer pot. I lost the pot or never had it. This can submerge into it. And I don't have to like be fishing my vegetables out of the water. And then I can plunge this right into the ice water. Oh, and the other thing, I lay out a bunch of towels because you want to drain the vegetables and not have a lot of water in them. 
Um, so let me get the water on real quick. There's my basket. And I'm adding salt to my water. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of salt. Um, that's optional. Yeah, I've never found from people for sure why people put salt in their pasta water. It's like most people do, but nobody can tell me for sure why. Yeah, the salt goes into the pasta and, and it's a flavoring. So it's not really for a cooking reason. Some people say the water boils quicker if there's salt or. Well, it gets absorbed into the, the pasta it tastes different. Or it doesn't stick together. Many people have different reasons, but nobody can tell me for sure why they do it. Mine's but. flavor, so. So I really like green beans. So I got a big thing of green beans. Excellent. So yeah, we'll prep all the vegetables. It was sad to me to see that you could get broccoli florets that's for cool. cheaper than you could get the whole broccoli. Oh, this cool. is the good part. I mean, like people consider this the best part and yeah. yet it was cheaper. So nice. I so it's I've never happy. bought broccoli florets. I've always bought the whole thing and cut them off. That's what I'll be doing in just a minute. So let me go over the ingredients for the peanut dressing. Um, it is, a, and this is just a single recipe, so you can double it and we'll talk about that later. Um, but it's a half a cup of peanut butter, any kind, crunchy or smooth. And um, I find the cheaper it is, the better. No, <laughs> I don't know. It's just... Yeah. Also, um, a half a cup of reduced sodium. Um, and I'm reading you exactly the recipe from the cookbook, which is flavors. And the first time, just a little history on it. The first time I made this was January 13th, 2002. And I've made it many times since then. I could tell by how stained the pages are. <laughs> so uh, a half a cup of chicken broth a third of a cup of soy sauce. Um, this woman prefers tamari. Uh, a quarter of a cup of Asian dark sesame oil from toasted sesame seeds. But the toasted one where it's got the black flavor of it. Because you can get yeah. toasted, you can get sesame oil that has very little flavor. Yeah, no, you want the flavorful one. Five teaspoons of red wine vinegar. I've never oh. tried to find, but... Um, so that's five teaspoons of red wine vinegar, five Beautiful. teaspoons of sugar. All right, I forgot the sugar. And four teaspoons of minced fresh ginger, and we'll we'll clean that up and chop it up. And I do mince it. I notice, even though you're processing it or putting it in a blender, if it's not minced, it doesn't. You now, still do you have peel to it first. I do. Okay. I Definitely. And I've, um, I think on this show, I learned you could use a spoon. It goes real quick or somebody taught me to use a spoon. Um, three garlic cloves peeled and minced. And the recipe calls for one tablespoon of Tabasco pepper sauce. I did that the first time and only once. And it was way too hot for my taste. So that means I need two tablespoons, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I. I'm out of Tabasco, so I will be switching that out. But instead of the tablespoon, I only use a half a tablespoon for this recipe. But I do not like blowing my top of my head off with screaming hot. So that is the dressing. Um, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. No, I'm sorry. It's only nine ingredients. And then um, it calls for chicken, any kind that you like four cups of broccoli florets. And this is to make enough to serve six people. I'm not making that much because it's just me. Uh, three cups of angled asparagus. She uses nine ounces of narrow fresh egg noodles. And then you'll want extra Asian dark sesame oil to sprinkle on your pasta. When the pasta comes out and you cool it, you just put the, that on there to keep it from all glumping together. One large sweet red pepper that does not get cooked. Uh, two thirds cup sliced green onion. She puts it on a bed of Napa cabbage. 
So she uses five cups of finely shredded Napa cabbage. This is when she does presentation individually serving it. She puts it on a bed of Napa. Uh, three fourths cup roasted. So that's peas. the only thing I didn't get. What's that? The Napa cabbage. I didn't get Napa because I just didn't go to a place that has it. And then a quarter of a cup of the fresh chopped um, cilantro. So at the end, the dressing's mixed on everything except the peanuts and the cilantro, and they just get sprinkled on top, the whole peanuts and the fresh um, cilantro. So that's the ingredients, and let's get cooking. Um, the water's on. You've always wanted to say that, haven't you? Let's okay. get cooking. <laughs> so I'm going to show you back here. I have my chicken broth that is just you real quick the chicken broth that I use and I love this because then you're not buying a lot of water I use better than bullion chicken base they come in all different flavors they also have beef um, it's organic and this is just roasted chicken they have a uh, chicken and roasted garlic they have and all it's, it's like a extreme concentrate yeah well it's one one teaspoon per cup so I made a cup and I'm going to go ahead and turn this on high and bring and it's cold so I'm going to bring it to a boil and I'm going to set my timer for like five minutes just so I don't forget um so I have I have I brought, actually bought a can so I could I have the broth but what I'm doing for broth is I put all the bones of the rotisserie chicken and then I bought two chicken breasts that here I'll show you in a second that um still had the bones on them but you can see it's not very much bone but i can toss that in there if i wanted to i could cut this even more off and i toss that's the rib meat i can just toss that in there yeah any um, kind of chicken i usually do it in a, a pressure cooker your chicken you can do it in any type of pot so i've talked about this before um, when you get your certain produce, this is my asparagus. I have a plastic bag and then a clean paper towel. I let these dry. I reuse them. It's just a happy paper towel. And then here in water is my asparagus. And it's all nice. If it was at all wilty, it's all fresh and it's already cleaned. If you don't buy organic, um, you can soak your vegetables in, um, an ounce of baking soda to a hundred ounces of water. And that clear cleans off all the pesticides. So if you're not doing organic. Especially strawberries. Um, yes, yeah, so, some of those. Um, and yeah, I always try to buy organic, but today I couldn't. So that was my asparagus. Here's my broccoli. Once again, I, I cleaned it up last night, washed it. And um, it's in water. So, and I use my plastic bags. I let them dry real well. Um, Stays nice and fresh that way. Huh? It, it, and if it's at all wilty, you could bring it back to life. Um, you want it. This is one of the rare times I never buy, you know, pre chopped up stuff in a package. But again, it was like late last night. One of the other. It took what I could get. So, let me get to chopping my broccoli. Oh, and my chicken is boiling. I wonder if I should put a lid on it. How's my pasta water already boiling? This is a nice new pan. I like it. Mine's getting there. So um, I'm probably not going to make all of this. And so I Because mine takes so long to cook, I think I'll go ahead and start the pasta. Okay. And I will save this part and trim off this real tough area. I love the flavor of that um, uncooked. Uncooked? Yeah. So it you is. like the flavor or the texture? Both. So uh, for instance, I would just trim off, I don't know. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? Yeah. I just take this outside off. And it comes, it kind of just, 
So you're peel. just peeling the skin. Look how easy just, that is. Just the real tough part. And, and you can cook this as well. I tend to save that to make uh, veggie broth, but. But it comes right off. And um, to me, it's like celery heart. It's just, it is so good. I mean, I like eating it. And then I'll save this as my, for veggie broth. I'll save that for veggie broth. And, um, you know, if you got it small, it can go into the, if you want to use the whole thing. Let's see. I'm, I'm rinsing my veggies. Oh, I'm getting distracted. I need to put all the pasta in. But we need to, you said the red pepper we're just cooking, I'm cutting, but not. Not it, cooking. Yeah, so that'll be. Okay, my chicken's almost done, I can tell. And I will be using that broth for the. All right, so there it is. I'm gonna let it sit in that and keep cooking for just a minute longer. I think that's sometimes why, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, I think that's why sometimes I don't like chicken if it gets overcooked. So, so this is all going in here. I, I like that pine with the, I've always wanted to get one of those. I just have one of these baskets. Man, this humidity is getting to me. Is it? I, I've been I'm trying to be energy efficient while also not waste my solar energy and um, haven't turned my air conditioner on yet. But. So I have just a, maybe three cups. Um, I love the broccoli and it, it stands up well. It, it'll last for days in the peanut sauce. Um, do, you ever, you, do you usually make extra peanut sauce? Yeah, I think I'm going to double the recipe. Um, so I don't want to confuse everybody. That's why I gave you the single recipe um, initially. So right now I'm going to put this in. You guys see the pot? Yeah, so you're just steaming. I'm not steaming it. I'm blanching it. It's, oh, you know what? Before I, well, I'm going to go do this. And I'm gonna put my timer on for four minutes. And then plop it down in there. What I need to do is make this. And it's gonna get loud because I'm gonna be pouring. Should I mute this? I'm gonna be dumping um, ice in there. No, please don't unmute. We want to see all the nicks and crannies of the cook process, including the hardest parts. Besides, uh, Zoom mutes really loud sounds. All right, so there. It's kind of a waste of uh, ice, but I find it works best. So I got my ice bath going. And 
This has come back up to a boil. Now, while that's cooking, I'm going to do my asparagus. I might do all of this just because I love asparagus. So I'm kind of going to angle it. And I'm going to save these tips and not put them in as long as I do the stems. Oh, so the other thing you want to get out now is towels to dry your produce. So I probably should have followed your process because I don't have tons of space here. I should have did the pasta afterwards. All right, let me move the camera. So we're making asparagus now. Well, yeah, I, I chopped up my asparagus, um, but I love asparagus. I find the combination of asparagus and um, the broccoli just so good. I haven't been, a, and I do sugar snap peas sometimes. I haven't been able to, uh, this is almost done. It may not need four minutes. So, oops, um, how did you cut the asparagus? I cut them on an angle and I kept the stalks separate from the tips because I don't want the tips cooked quite as long because these just are very tender. These are the real skinny ones, so these aren't going to take long at all. So did you cut them in three pieces or two? Well, you know, I think this some of this I probably should put into the, this is the, the woody. Some of these are really woody. This one, these ones look like they've been done already so and sometimes I take a, a potato peeler to this but I already cut it so um, in fact I may put these in just for a minute longer it just and matters if it's got the really woody part a lot of asparagus nowadays seems to be that they've yeah I usually cut a little bit of the bottom up it's pretty tough well, I already cut the bottoms off when I oh, put okay. them in water and when I put them in water last night. So this is going right into this bath. And I want that to really stop cooking. Let me grab my I'm gonna use the pasta to steam my because I wasn't thinking. And I don't have enough room on this little stove to do it all. So. You can also use the same bath to stop your noodles, right? What's that? You just use the same ice bath for your noodles. Yeah, I'll, I'll even use this container. I never cooked the noodles in the containers before, but last week when we did um, that delicious, what did we do, that Thai? Um, Oh, what was last week? It was so good. Basically, it was stir fry. Wasn't it? it was similar yeah. vegetables, but the sauce was different. I mean, it was similar. Basically, it was pasta, vegetables, and sauce. But it's interesting how we make similar dishes and they'll taste completely different. Oh, for sure. So now I'm going to do the uh, the tougher parts of the asparagus. And I'm maybe I'm doing everything backwards. I did the tough part first. All right, so <laughs> we're going in here. And I'm going to set the timer, I think, for like two minutes. Uh, I think in, in, in a lot of cases with the vegetables, it's better to be a little underdone than overdone. So it also is all these vegetables you can eat raw. Yeah, um, but there's something nice about having the tough parts taken off of it. Um, I'm lacking in bowls because normally the ice bath bowl is the one I use to put everything in. So I'm going to have to... 
I'm going to be putting these in here. Now they're dry. Ta-da! And it's really, yeah, it could have been in just a minute less. So I'm going to go ahead. So you said the asparagus or a uh, minute less for which one? I would say only three minutes for the broccoli. I mean, it, it's a, it's a little softer than I would want. Um, so I, after a minute of the, the stalks in there, I put the tips in. Um, what did I do with my, oh, there's my fork. How are you doing holding the camera with one hand and cooking? You're not getting to use both hands. <laughs> so I'm just stirring and when I'm cutting. So this is going on two minutes total. You know, you can eat asparagus raw. So it's, I'm gonna take this out. Let me see if the timer's gonna go off for the two minutes. Um, so for me, that's my cooked vegetables. I think I'm gonna put it on, I'm just gonna give it another like 30 seconds or maybe I should taste one. Taste them all, taste them all. This is one of the woodier. It's kind of tough. Yeah, mine I think needs a little shortcut when I'm uh, when I'm using like a tray in the oven, I take the asparagus and I just put it on a plate with a little water and give it a couple minutes in the microwave and then it it really works well when you put them in the oven. You know, I bet you I sh I, you could do this all in the microwave. I I cook broccoli in the microwave all the time. Yeah, but I mean, if you take uh, asparagus and you put it on a on a sheet pan with you know some other food it will not there's not enough time it won't cook i mean it will but eventually but if you're like i put fish it's only in there eight minutes if i took raw asparagus it won't get cooked so i that's why I, it's like blanching i'd put it in the microwave with some water basically blanching see how bright green that is and it's you know not it's it's still firm Oh my God. <laughs> All right. I think this has cooled down enough. You just really want to stop the cooking process. So it's just like a couple minutes and then stop the cooking process. Very similar to pasta, except pasta have to cook a little longer, but yeah. Oh. And the drying helps in that it makes the dressing stick to it better. Is that the only reason? Um, yeah, I've never not dried it. So yeah, I, it, it'll be great no matter what you do. And I might be doing it, making work for myself. But I definitely think you need to stop the cooking process because otherwise it turns to mush. Some of these I'm going to cut a little bit smaller. Oh, that one's tough. That's going in the. Yeah, I kind of I have a small mouth, so I like little pieces. <laughs> I think most people do. I tend to not chop things up very much. And then people are like, what's your problem? I remember I was cooking with a friend of mine. Um, he's half Chinese and makes delicious food, lives in Oregon and gets fresh food, sea urchins, all sorts of stuff. And we were cooking a meal and he had me, I was, you know, being sous chef. And he kept saying, well, chop that a little smaller and cut this up. And it's like, I did so much cutting and prepping. I said, do you want me to chew it for you too? It was like, 
But he says that's why we don't have forks. I mean, knives that we right, just... exactly. It's chopstick size, so you can pick it up as a chopstick. Exactly. I never thought this would be the case, Lulu, but I'm trying to catch up with you. Well, I'm prepared, you know, being the chef, I didn't want everybody. Um, and if I'm going too fast, I can slow down. So are and you I, just chopping them? Yeah, you're just chopping all the asparagus smaller. In. I just, I wish I would have just cut it smaller. It would have saved me time, but I was. All right, so this is done. And I'm going to put this into my bowl. Eventually, it's going to come out of this bowl because I won't be able to mix it in this little bowl. So right now, that's the broccoli and the asparagus. Any other vegetables you want to put in, um, mushroom or uh, snow peas or the green beans. You want to blanch your green beans, um, trim them up and, and blanch them. I'm going to leave this here because I'm going to set the noodles not out of the I'm gonna put the noodles in this. So here we go. I've never done this before with the noodles. Um, so these are. So what do you normally do then if you haven't done I, it with the noodles? The pasta and I end up pouring off the water. Oh, okay. The pasta last. I've never done a. I've never done a separate. Uh, pot for the pasta and the vegetables I've always done. I think I'm going to make this whole thing. All right. So this is going to go quick. Just four to six minutes. So here we go. How fun. I know I probably should have done this as an experiment. Oh, let me put the timer on. So I but like you said, your preferred pasta or vegetables, pick ones you like and color, but it's it's really the sauce. So one of the things I really enjoy about this recipe is the sweet red pepper, the scallions, and um, the fresh cilantro. They're kind of nice finishing flavors. Um, this peanut sauce is great for making spring rolls you know with, with the, I almost thought thought about doing that because those are the ones you just put in hot water for like 10 seconds um and they're super simple and people like put tofu or cooked egg and a sprig of I don't they all sorts of neat things go in spring rolls but the the, the, the dipping sauce is delicious for that these guys are sticking together a little bit. Yeah, watch them. Rice noodles. Um, usually, you put have to put them in in small amounts because they'll stick together really well. Oh, that's uh, so. I might have put. Plus, there's enough water, but this little container is confining them, so they're not. I'm thinking about dumping them into the bigger thing, and then I could strain this into a big pot and keep the water. Because you know, rice noodles are really easy to stick together and then really easy to overcook. Except the ones that are stuck together, they don't cook enough. Right. <laughs> like oh my goodness my house is i should have turned the air conditioner on oh because you're boiling water you're adding well it was i it was humid before i started yeah it's just we're having like this crazy fall spring where it's or fall summer where it's like super hot let me drink some Drink some water. I think we're getting there. Okay, you two, break it up. All right, I had to, I'm a little behind, but because I had to get this water, water boiling again. 
I actually was steaming the vegetables on top of my pasta. Mm. I was using the same water because my pasta was cooking longer. So I was blanching the vegetables in the top. And so I, then I took the pasta out and there was like hardly any water. So now I'm reheating the pot. So after this, I'll, I'll submerge this in ice water. Then I'll dump the water and move to move everything to the big. And um, we'll next chop up this sweet pepper and the, and the scallions, the cilantro. And then everything will be done in order. Then we can start doing, well, we also want to just, if for those who are doing cilantro, just prep the cilantro for the topping. It's nice when everything is is already done ahead and you can just eat, you know, and assemble. If now, you just need a few cloves of garlic, I started doing this where I just rub them between my hands. One of my couch surfers gave me, oh, I'm going to taste this. The timer's about ready to go off. And it like literally just, well, just peels off. See? Oh, that's I, know, I know it's a big shortcut, but I've been using ginger garlic paste, Indian ginger garlic paste for a lot of these dishes. This that's really good. You can get a big jar of it, especially if you use it regularly. I do. Yeah, I go to the Indian store. It's not that expensive. And boy, you just everything, you know, all almost all Indian food calls for ginger garlic. You just take a couple scoops and throw it in the pot. Now, Fred, I would recommend you just get a tube of ginger and a tube of garlic because it'll even stay fresher because there's no oxygen will hit it. Because as soon as you open that jar of ginger garlic, the, it will start. Yeah. You know, but it takes a while, but still. I keep it in the fridge and I, you know, I go through it pretty fast. Yeah, that's the secret. Too many people buy the big jar and then, you know, it... I mean, I know it's a shortcut, but I, I know it's a shortcut, but guess what? When I went to the India store, I thought, oh, probably, uh, you know, Indian cooks probably do it from scratch. Well, they had a section that was like six feet high and six feet wide of ginger garlic and ginger garlic paste. No, I mean, when you're making, you know, a, a huge pot of something, you're not going through that process of making it fresh like that. Just, so my noodles are taking a little longer than um, that box says. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start chopping up my uh, red pepper. I've been peeling my garlic. But... Oh, and I got to do that too. But this, oh. I'm trying to get the salad -y part done, and then I'll focus on the, the dressing. Because yeah, do you call this, it's like when you serve this or do you bring it to potlucks, you serve it cold, right? Room temperature. Okay, but. And I don't do the chicken normally, so it, it doesn't go, you know, it's not scary. You know, it's fun about having the leftover vegetable parts is I'm a little more generous with what I throw in there because I know it's going to go to a good cause. So you want to cut this about, I don't know, so thick. Once again, it's, it's what you prefer. I like things on a little bit on the smaller side, but that's just me. Um, Almost uh, Julianne. No, nah, yeah, it's a little thicker than that, but then I'm going to want to make them Because like you think about the bites that are going to go in your mouth, and it's it's that's a matter of preference. Have you ever seen recipes where it says bite size? Yeah, I could have talked. I had up asparagus in my mouth. You know, you have to taste and see if they're cooked. Right. All right. So let me check this pasta. Yeah, this, I think because it didn't have a lot of wiggle room. 
I'm glad I checked it before just plunging it into ice water. Okay, that's happy. I this might is... overdid it with two pounds of green beans. But I go to Chinese <laughs> buffets just for the green beans. You don't have to put the peanut sauce on at all. At all? No, just kidding. I mean, all of it. <laughs> what did I do with? And so I'm going to turn this off, and I'll be using this for the bone broth or the vegetables. This side. I want to ask Howard a question. This side. Are you there, Howard? What's the question? Well, in like uh, Tom Popo, where they're doing the noodles. And they make them so quick. Does that mean they're blanched ahead of time? Uh, noodles are so versatile. Yes, it can be. And it also can't. It's not a word that's commonly used in Eastern noodles. But in Orient, they also have an idea of al dente noodles. But they don't usually use that word. They use the word chewy for al dente noodles. And, and yeah, it does affect that kind of al dente mouthfeel. When I was in Thailand, also the noodles were all fresh made, so they weren't dried. So literally they had boiling yeah. water. You would just get the noodles on a chopstick, two chopsticks, put it in the water, 30 seconds, back out, rice noodles, they were ready. I just remember like in Tom Popo, you know, it's a it's a noodle shop and the customers are all coming in and there's like 10 people all lined up there. And so the woman is taking a scoop of noodles and throwing them in, in a little basket kind of in the hot water, but they're not, not in there very long, which makes oh, yeah, me think the, they, they must have been blanched before. No, or something. no, it's all fresh pasta. It's just fresh, fresh pasta, pasta doesn't yeah. need very long. It needs three minutes max of boiling. Okay, well, that's why I was asking. Thank you. I, when I used to work in an Italian restaurant, they kept the pasta cooked in water and then they would strain it and throw it in the pan with the sauce, be it an olive oil sauce or, uh, you know, whatever kind of sauce. Um, and then it was ready. They just had to warm it up. So my noodles are done. I got my big bowl back because that was my ice bath bowl. Um, I'm going to sprinkle a tablespoon of the uh, toasted sesame um, on this. It keeps it from sticking and starts a little bit, a little bit of flavor. Isn't that a great sound, my bowl? I could use it for a symbol. <laughs> I was just like, that's like the sound when you're canning, all the cans go. You're like, oh, they're sealing. Yes. So these, these I just drained, you know, from the ice bath. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm, I think I might stick with this kind of noodle in the future. Um, so to this, I'm gonna go ahead and add the vegetables. And I already chopped up my um, sweet peppers. I'm gonna put these in here. And you know, you just eyeball what you like in it. Um, and the last thing that I'm gonna put in with the vegetables is the scallions, green onions. And I always use this part and I use the top part. For some reason, I'll, I'll put this part in, um, I'll put this part in my soup broth. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just. This is beautiful. All right. And you can get kind of fancy and do it on an angle. It makes it look kind of pretty. OK. 
Try to keep your fingers out of the way in the knife. Um, should I show that my thumb where I hit the tip of my thumb last night? <laughs> okay. I was I'm, chopping vegetables for five and a half hours on uh, Friday. And I just, I caught just the tip of my, I'm not showing that side, but if you want to see it, it's just a little bit of skin. Uh, yep. Oh, right. I forgot to blanch those. Oops. I mean, not blanch. The, the I forgot to put the veggies back in the cold water, these ones in cold water. The pepper and the scallions. Um, I think I need a couple of more green onions. I kind of went overboard with asparagus, but I love asparagus. Cooled. When I buy green onions, I'm only using a couple. I take the rest out and I go and plant them outside. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, you just dig a little hole and stick them in there. They already have roots on them, and then they, they're there when you need them the next time. I probably should do that. I've been just putting them in a little thing of water. And, and it just goes stick. Well, depends on the weather here. It never it doesn't freeze here, so you can do it any time of the year. Yeah, I usually put them in a little thing of water, and it doesn't do it that great. Mm -hmm. All right. I always use them up, so I have green onions that are like three feet tall. Wow. So the the red pepper, did you mince them or just julienne them? Uh, just bite-sized. They're, they're a little on the big side for me, but I wanted yeah, to... See, I really like green beans, like, really long, so I didn't even cut them. Oh, that's good. That's it. Anything can save you time. Uh, it's all a matter of preference. Okay. Wait, I'm putting these red onions, um, red peppers just right on top of the salad now, right? Yeah. Now, I feel you... really strange calling this salad. It's like. Right. Um, did you put sesame oil on your pasta when it was done? I put a little. Um... No, I didn't. I put a little olive oil. Okay. So the sesame, um, I it, did just starts, it starts the flavor profile going. And then um, I think that's going to be enough onion. I put way more onion than the recipe calls. All right. So it's beautiful. Can you see inside there? I can't. I can't see what you guys see. Oh yeah! Look at all that color. And that's on the top of the pasta, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just gonna give it a just so you can get kind of an idea. Now you can make it to this point and put the dressing on it, and it can sit even at room temperature for a few hours if you don't have the chicken in there. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be refrigerated. It's all nice and stable. Um, but that's cool. beautiful. I didn't do the green onions yet. Yeah. You want to do your green onions? So the, the vegetable part of it is done. And then we're going to start with um, let me wash my hands. getting saucy here. So, Fred, what do you think about that long? And you can just plant those, or did I cut it too short? I don't know. The ones I'm not going to use, I plant the whole onion. I just stick it in the ground. The oh, the whole thing. Yeah, Got the it. whole thing. Yeah. And then when I need some, I go out and dig one up or cut the top off the one out of the garden. So, quick question. Uh, who wants to make a double recipe? I do. Yep. Should I give the ingredients 
for the double recipe and, and not confuse people with the single? Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so at the beginning of the show, I went through the exact ingredients for a single batch. So what I'm making is going to be too much to put on that. It's going to be at least twice as much. Well, I made two pounds of pasta, so I was already going to double it. This is my cheat sheet. It literally lives. That's your tattoo? Yes, yeah, my tattoo. This is the cheat sheet of my go-to recipes. Um, gazpacho, pesto. I do the exact same thing. I've got recipes on the back of the cupboard door. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, this is the best marinade. This would be my other tattoo is this marinade. Um, <laughs> this is the best margarita. And that's my hummingbird nectar. So, And so this I took off of right here. And what's so funny is this is Thursday, the 14th of August. And I laminated it in 2008. But it was on like the scratch piece of paper, so I didn't have to always get the um, cookbook out. Oh, I, lamination smart. Keep it clean. And and you can see on this, it says single, double. Now, when we <laughs> get down to the vinegars and it says 10 teaspoons, that's literally going to be three tablespoons and one teaspoon will be the equivalent. So not measuring. Do you think time. I should scoop everything directly into the blender when we're measuring? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it right into the food processor. And I'm going to start with the broth. I don't want to start with the peanut butter. Can you guys see my food processor? I can't see what you see. A little bit lower. Yeah, there. Got it. Now we can see that. I'm, I'm, I'm having a thunderstorm, so we'll see if the power and all that goes out. Not okay. the power, the internet. I've got a backup power system. But. So by, okay, so the double recipe, you start out with one cup chicken broth. All right, there's my broth that's been cooking. And here's my broth. No, it's too much. So it lost in the process of cooking the chicken. It lost some of its volume. So I'm just gonna take some from the pasta water and I'm just, so I'm almost at a cup. I'm I like that just cooking my chicken breasts, I got enough broth for this because this recipe doesn't call for much. No, and when you're doing a single recipe, it's only a half a cup. So I'm putting this, right into my food processor. This doesn't overflow. Oh, you might not be able to fit a double batch in? No, well, we'll see. It might be a disaster. So now I'm going to do one cup of peanut butter. Where so in the recipe it shows your peanut butter? I don't see any peanut butter in the recipe. In the uh -oh. dressing. It's in the dressing. The dressing at the bottom. It's in the dressing. Cut. You want to? Yeah, but I don't see it in the recipe post. It says it see peanut recipe. Okay, below. here, I'll cut and paste it again. Yeah, I tried to do the whole thing and it wouldn't let me paste it. I had to paste it up in a whole bunch of pieces, unfortunately. All right, there's the dressing. It's peanut butter, reduced, uh, well, the chicken broth we put in, soy sauce, toasted sesame oil, vinegar, sugar, ginger, okay. garlic, and some pepper, hot pepper. Yeah, they only posted the hot pepper. Okay, thank you. Let's see. What do you guys? Use another nut butter if you wanted to. You could. You'd have to change the title. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. I'd so, say that's about half of one of these two pound containers. So. All right, so that's the peanut. Um, 
I'm going to do all my liquids first. Two thirds cup of soy sauce, or I'm using tomorrow today. <laughs> tomorrow I'm today. I'm using tomorrow. That was pretty funny. Is it bad when you laugh at your own jokes? Someone has to think they're funny. Right. Oh, look at that. I'm opening up my, my gallon of soy sauce. Oh, no, wait. That's not soy sauce. That's cooking wine. Here's my soy sauce. So how much we need? Uh, two thirds a cup. It got so dark in here, I have to turn on my room light. Gosh, I'm real oh. nervous about this. Hopefully it won't overflow. Oh. It looks like about a six cup. <laughs> Cuisinart. All right, a half a cup of dark sesame oil. Yeah, start that. Uh, start your Cuisinart slow, just in case it's going to get out of control. What did I say? A half a cup of the sesame oil. That's a lot. Huh? Quarter cup. Quarter cup. Well, now it's. Oh, doubling. we're doubling. Yeah, doubling. Doubling it is a half a cup. all right and then so like i said 10 teaspoons let me get my cheat sheet see my, see my cheat sheet yeah so that's, a, that's what or needs because he thought that the two teaspoons was a tablespoon <laughs> <laughs> just so, teasing just teasing it's three teaspoons to a tablespoon. We need 10, three goes into 10, three. So we need three tablespoons and one teaspoon. Let's see. Red wine vinegar, is that where I am at? Yeah, so you yep. want three tablespoons. Do you use that for a shot glass when you're not uh, cooking? No, I use a shot glass. <laughs> I use a shot glass for a shot glass. <laughs> then. Three, and then one teaspoon. What's nice about this little measure, that's a tablespoon, and then it has the teaspoons on there. That is nice. I forget I have these, and now it's like, I just need, they're, they're really easily, found in my kitchen, it's just I forget. And it's a little easier than doing the, okay, and then the sugar. So it's a lot of sugar, by the way. So three tablespoons, one. The old sweet and sour. That's got a good blend of everything. Three. So three tablespoon and one teaspoon. Can you guys hear that storm? Oh my goodness. We can't now, hear it. Um, so since I don't and I, I don't have um the Tabasco, which is a nice flavor, and it's literally if you went by the recipe, it'd be two tablespoons. Um uh, I'm gonna put one tablespoon and then try it based on your recommendation. And I think I'm just, I'm using sriracha because I don't have, sad to say, I don't have um, Tabasco, I ran out. So I'm only putting in a half a tablespoon, if I can get it out. 
But oh, that's nice. Just put a little bit of water in there in that bottle and swish it around. Oh, you got another one. Oh shit! Oh shoot! It's it's overflowing. I've got to do something quick. Get a bowl. Take some out. Oh, it's all over my counter. All right, this is a disaster. It's leaking or overflowing? It's leaking. It didn't go over the top, so that means it's leaking through the bottom someplace. All right, that's why I use my blender. Yeah, so I rarely I, I have a food processor and I rarely use it. It seems like a lot of home cooks use it a lot. I know. I've got a little three cup one, a Cuisinart little three cup. It costs like 20 bucks. And uh, when I need one, that's what I use. I so tend to we'll, just use my blender instead because I have that heavy. I've got two of them. I've got this one. This yeah, guy, I know that. Yeah, I don't have. I'm trying to think if I even have a blender. I probably do, but it's not heavy. This, this little guy is like 25 years old. I got it at the thrift store, and I love it. And then I've got a big one, that three horsepower commercial one. Right. That, it's got like the Vitamix. We talked about that on another show. I got that at an, uh, an auction from a smoothie shop, and that one. You can turn almonds into um, powder. Yeah, they're they're also their big uh, promo is you can turn it on and the blades will heat it up and it'll heat make it into soup and make it hot. Really, I never do yeah. that. That's what Vitamix, one of their commercials, is. Pour all the ingredients in there and just let it go. And the blade going through there will heat it up so it gets cooked at the same time. Yep. <laughs> I've never tried that. I've never let it go long enough. Yeah, well, that's their, that's one of their promo promo ideas. I've never seen anybody do it. But. So how, you got it cleaned up a little bit? Or is it everywhere? Uh, it's cleaned up except for the processor. Um, what do you think happened? You must have a bad gasket where that uh, where where the uh, bowl goes down over the gear. Too much liquid. I, I don't I, think it's I don't think it's too much liquid because it didn't go over the top means meaning it was leaking out through the bottom somewhere. But it was leaking through the. It comes up. And That's what I say. Leaking through the bottom. Yeah, I know. But when you have it more than five inches high, that's when that happens. Well, I never thing. peel the ginger, but using a spoon really does it really good. Just the side of the spoon. The other reason I like the garlic ginger paste. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this one's a really intricate one, so it's a pain in the butt to peel it. But um, yeah, I tend to just toss the whole thing in. I'll save the skin and make a little bit of um, yeah, but pee. I don't like biting into a chunk of garlic. Oh, yeah. Even in cooked foods, because it's fibrous. I mean, you, it's not the taste of it. It's just that, you know, it's you can't chew it up. Yeah, that's true. You, you kind of look around, where am I going to spit this if you're with other people? I'm getting hit by like almost a hurricane. It was just like, wow. The, the, the light dropped so much that I had to turn on all my lights because it wasn't bright enough from the window. And it's like, a, what do you call it? Um, yeah, when I was like, like, have you ever been somewhere tropical where it, you get that big storm? Yeah. Yep, that's what I'm getting hit by right now. It's I'm like looking up your weather. I just like. Yeah, like, you guys are getting. It says thunderstorm, <laughs> severe weather warning from 2.30. Additional alert, severe weather statement, blah, blah, blah. Yep, that's me. All wow. of a sudden, it's really sudden. All right. So, I peeled my ginger. What happened was my liquid got above this center. Oh, I see. It went up right. over the center. I get it. I Yeah, now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Please I understand. forgot about, I haven't used one of those in years. I forgot about that part. Live and learn on live TV. There we go. So I okay. need to mince, mince the ginger and the garlic. 
So all I need to do is my garlic and my ginger. Now, is this going to go in the blender or? Yeah, I, I already put it into my vitamin. So see, Ta -da. so I've got to do my ginger and my garlic. Can you guys you see? Don't, if you, so I don't have to cut it really small because the it'll be running through the blender. It's been my experience when I didn't mince it, it didn't do it thoroughly. Oh, okay. That's been my experience. So it might I just spin around in there somehow. It, it's too big. It does. It does. Oh yeah, because you have all that peanut butter. It's not very liquidy. That's why you start the cousinot first with those. Maybe stuff. if you mix the liquids and the ginger and garlic in first and then add the right. peanut butter. Right. Maybe then. But uh, I've done it. Yeah. I just heard my backup power system kick on. So we'll see if the internet holds up. Uh, Susan ah, is cooking done. through a hurricane. No. Technically, hurricanes are just ocean storms. So well, they kind of, of yeah, they as they come ashore, it, it takes the oomph out of them a little bit sometimes. Right, but I'm too far inland to actually get hit by a hurricane. But we, we I had don't three know. Times. I don't know. Right now, Charlotte is warmer than the beaches. So well, Charlotte, Charlotte could get hit by hurricanes because you're close. Yeah, yeah. well, in Carbondale, I'm like a thousand wind, miles but, inland. Yeah, in Carbondale, the, the wind is going nine miles an hour. It has to go 75 miles an hour to be a hurricane. Right. So but I, a long we've, way away. we've been hit three times by the same weather pattern as a hurricane, and they call it an inland hurricane. I'm an inland tornado, is what they call it. That's so what still, I was trying to say. So it's inland, still, it's still the same warmer. weather pattern as a hurricane, yeah. but it's a new, unusual phenomenon. You know, you're doing your, Lulu, you're doing your uh, ginger. When you take a spoon and scrape, that is the way to go. You just that's scrape what, it with a spoon. What, uh, or, that's what, yeah, that's or what was she's doing. doing to skin it. If there's parts I can't get the spoon into. Yeah. So, yeah, it's the really small ones are, are hard. But, Good texture. There's nothing okay, wrong with the skin. Make sure. So peanut butter, broth, soy sauce, toasted sesame oil, red wine vinegar, sugar, minced ginger, peeled and minced garlic. You really have to put peeled on the recipe. <laughs> um, right. And a tablespoon of Tabasco. So I we're doubling it up, and so I. I put half as much just to see based on Lulu's recommendation. Well, you like it hot, so I would not be bashful if I were you. Well, I'll try it first just to be. I, and it depends on who you're feeding it to. And so you want eight. Oh, just this little blender is having a hard time. Eight teaspoons of. Uh, which is almost three tablespoons. Probably should have put it in the big one. Oily. Oh my goodness. It's hailing. Oh. I can hear little bits of ice hitting. What, what month is it? May. I know, I'm just like, All right, that's having a hard time pulsating. All right. You know what this smells like? There's like a there we go. Oh, this smells so good. All right. If I were my garlics, my garlics got creamed out <laughs> at the uh, the overflow. 
Yeah, the, normally I buy garlic from a local farmer. For the first time, I bought some at a store and it was in a little plastic bag with four cloves. Yeah. And it was clear plastic, but it also had blue writing on it. And then I opened it up. Every one of them was moldy and you couldn't see it through the blue writing. Bummer. Yep. Yeah, I had some delivered the other day with groceries and with the, with the, I had to throw the garlic out. It, was, it wasn't any good. That's funny you said that because I bought a bunch, like two pounds of it at uh, Costco and I had to go through it last night. Half of each clove was bad. It was the weirdest and it was moldy, but the other half was fine. Well, I got a, a pound, I think a pound of asparagus delivered from Costco the other day. You know, it's in a bag and the tops were already getting gooey. Aww. And so I... So I just went online. They said, you know, how did you like your order? And I said, I didn't like the asparagus. It was spoiled. And they said, fine, we'll just take that right off your bill. And of course, the other 80% of it was okay. So I just chopped the tops off and used it anyway. You do that at all? But they're very good about making it right when you don't when you're not happy. You do that at Ooh, all? I blended this with one tablespoon of Tabasco in the double. That's enough. It's okay. got a zing to it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, as oh, my as God. I get, well, it's kind of thick, but I could probably drink this. Oh, my goodness. That is good. <laughs> it's my favorite. I have a hard time Look eating that. anybody else's peanut sauce just because it's so delicious. Now, have you done any variations of this, but always the exact same? Um, as far as ingredients, I oftentimes end up putting more ginger and garlic in it just because um, I, what do you do with leftover either one of those? Um, I mean, the garlic's a little easier to get oh, right. Oh, I didn't measure. I just put a big chunk of both. <laughs> I was just like, this feels right. <laughs> but it says... Oh yeah, I, I definitely put extra. Now I'm rereading the directions. And it yeah. seems kind of weird to be so precise with the sugar and the, the vinegar, but it's such a good flavor. I don't want to mess with, you know, and then I could never make this from memory or just eyeball it only because it's, it's such a nice blend. But also, yeah. That vinegar breaks down the oils, so it's really a smooth sauce. All right. So you're saying that the Zoom will definitely quiet my... Yes. Did you hear me blending mine? No, the uh, Zoom cuts off the noise. Yeah. I'm just picking these green beans. Oh, that's asparagus and just dipping it in the sauce, eating it. I was just thinking about making the sauce because you could put it on anything. Yeah, I mean, just make the sauce and store that. Because I like, I like cook fish almost every night. I could easily take that sauce and just dribble it over the fish. I think it might be too intense. Um, fish tends to like light sauces, but no, this might be. Well, I usually use. Like, I'm usually using salmon, which has got a stronger flavor. Oh, yeah, than salmon would work. Yeah, salmon could take it. It's interesting because it, it's it got a ton of peanut butter, but it's not like front and center extreme on the peanut Yeah, because I, when I think of this uh, peanut sauce, I think of satay sauce, you know, that they yep, use in tastes, Indonesia, which is a little more peanut tasting, I think. This tastes like satay sauce, but less peanut flavor. Uh-oh, yeah. my bag is going slow. So um, there's mine. Mine's a little more liquidy, partly because I used the fancy peanut butter. So it was much more oily. And I don't know if I lost half my ingredients on the counter because it doesn't quite taste the same <laughs> for me. But let me just show you next what we do. Um, you pour this over and you could always add more. So, you know, think about it while you do it. 
All right, I'm actually peanut sauce on noodles and blanched vegetables. Yeah, don't do it all or stir it up oh, yeah. how you like it. I forgot. I mean, it's a double recipe, so I need to save half of it. But stir it up to make sure you don't overdo it. All right, where's my tongs? But I actually know, I mean, well, this bowl's too big, so I've got two pounds of pasta in here, so. Now, the broccoli eventually and the pasta will soak it up, so. Um, oh, my goodness. Yeah, it looks so good. And then this is where you would cut up your Napa cabbage and put it on the bottom of your plate. Oh, for presentation, you'd like. Well, and, and, and to eat it. And so you well, would yeah. probably, if you were putting it on a bed of Napa cabbage, that cabbage is not dressed. So you But it's going to soak up the flavors from your, the, if the, I what's on the, top. If I did the Napa cabbage, I would put more dressing on it, you know, because you would want it to to soak down into the, the cabbage. Or if you had extra cabbage, you could just put a little before you put a little sauce on it if you wanted to. Yeah, I, but she's a restaurant, so she does, you know. Oh, All right. And then, um, so basically the, the cilantro and the nuts are just like you put on right before you serve it? Yeah, so I'm gonna plate this up. All right, I should do that too. I would like chop uh, almonds because I like chopped almonds. I never learned how to like get the pasta and twirl it into a nice little circle. <laughs> I've seen people like chefs do that where they they get it and somehow make the pasta like. Yeah, I've saw, I've seen that too. It stands up a little bit. Yeah. It's oh, good wait. when there's just a small portion on the big plate. They can kind of twirl it around. Oh, wait about what about the chicken? Should I should mince some of that up. Oh, do you know what? I need to put the chicken in there. Yeah, you don't you want... usually do chicken. You said no. Um, you want the chicken to have. Um... Let's hope my chicken's cooked enough. Let's see. You haven't done. You usually don't do protein with it, huh? Well, only because the last time I made the chick, the one time I made the chicken, it was awful. Awful in what sense? Too dry. Oh, the chicken was too dry. Yeah. This doesn't feel too terribly dry. I really worked at not cooking it too long. And I just did one little chicken tender. I think I'm just, since I didn't, I'm just going to dab the sauce on the. Yeah, it's a good idea. And then maybe some uh, ground black pepper, maybe. It's and pretty spicy, Fred. Would no, I just mean to just give it another little flavor boost. Oh, Fred, I want to thank you so much for turning me on to Sashwan. I have a grinder. Uh-huh. I used to do ground regular pepper, but I mean, I'm Szechuan all the way now. Yeah, I like Szechuan. It's really nice. I do uh, Kung Pao chicken occasionally, and that's where I use it mostly. But yeah, I mean, I tend to, anytime I want pepper, I'll just put a little of that usually. Because I mean, and then how about peanuts? Just sprinkle them on the top. Yeah, so a little cilantro. I buy, I buy those great big uh, peanuts already roast, roasted and all that from Costco, and they're really good. Ta-da! This is just Fisher's sea salt peanuts. Like I say, I like chopped almonds, but it is a peanut dish. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, nice yeah. presentation. You know, take pictures of that for the posting. 
Or you want to take a picture of it somehow because my phone is my camera. You want to hold it up to the screen? Let me see if I'm any good at this. <laughs> I don't know. Is that good? Just leave it. To... Fred. I don't know. I don't think that came out, but Fred could do a screenshot maybe. But Yeah, try and push it over a little more. Uh, I don't know what direction. Kind of. I just um, Leave it, on the, more. leave it on the table. Now, uh, it's just not. The, it's not, know, it doesn't have enough light on it. Push it toward the pink, pink, whatever the pink is over there. Yeah, yeah oh, there, there stop. You go. Stop. Now I can get a screenshot. Hold on. Don't move. <laughs> All right. Okay, I got a screenshot. So, I'll send, yeah. I'll send it to you. horrible tomorrow. that I'm just like, I don't know. That's what I love about this cooking show. I always come up with new flavors and I don't know about new flavors, but stuff that I can just eat the sauce with a spoon and that's it's pretty decadent. Let's see. So now I get to taste test it for you guys. You see how I like the chicken. Like I said, I think half my ingredients that landed on the counter probably. <laughs> made it taste a little different so i've already been tasting it because i've been dipping the veggie i was dipping the veggies in the sauce like i had a green bean a broccoli uh, asparagus so mm. but all right well i was gonna say any final words but your mouth's full <laughs> so this will last a while in the fridge i'll eat it for a couple of days I'll end up sharing it with, um, you know, family and friends. Obviously, those without peanut allergies. But, yeah, it's my go-to peanut sauce, and it's... Now, I have make... you ever done it without the chicken broth, it, with some other? No, I'm but... I was thinking to make it completely vegetarian, because you, you, you tend to not use the chicken breast anyway. Right. You you so could I would imagine you could just use vegetable broth or maybe even water. Like I mentioned earlier, if somebody did have a peanut allergy, you could use almond butter and chopped almonds on the top. It would have a different name for the recipe, but yeah, yeah it'd be a different name, <laughs> but it would still be the same base idea. Yeah. And yeah. and I used I used veggie broth and I put tofu in. in oh, no. There you go. Yeah. And how do you um, like? I and I would say if you do do this, use almonds because you do want that more, I don't know, nutty flavor. If you're using cashews, it's creamier and less nutty. So, but all right. Any final questions? I usually save this part for you to ask a bunch of questions, Lulu, but. I know, I'm always asking. You covered it all, so. <laughs> Good job, Lulu. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, and as usual, Susan made her own offshoot of it, but mm -hmm. I love that. And don't tattoo this recipe, just memorize it. We should just have you every week. We're going to have a quiz asking Lulu, what's the recipe this week? And you have to remember, and we'll just ask you. So eventually you'll have the nine ingredients. She'll have it on the back door of the, she'll have it on the door on her cupboard. <laughs> That's a really good idea to laminate a recipe you really like. And then because my I have a couple cookbooks that that particular page is just completely food stained. The same with this book, you know. Yeah. And uh, I don't tend to follow recipes very precisely, mm -hmm. but I I use them as inspiration. So I need to go back and look to like give me ideas. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna wrap it up. <laughs>